So I've got six o'clock. Um, I'm going to call our regular meeting to order. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, first thing is set adjust agenda. Um, oh. oh, I didn't grab it off the parent. Darn it. Um, the co op um, is requesting a banner last minute from last, same thing as last year. The, the, the banner. The ones on Wolka Street. Yeah, the banner. I have yeah. the application down in my office. So I'll go What's the banner? Item five. Just the uh, Harvard Farmers Market. Oh, did I say co-op? You no, did. Farmer, yeah. Sorry, Harvard. Farmers Market. Yeah. Got it. So we're gonna do an item five for that. <laughs> yeah, I've got the application down in my office. We can. I got a three thirty phone call. Okay. Priority. Um, my pen is. Uh, and then I would like, I don't know that we, I don't know that we need all the executive sessions we have, but um, I would like to add one for um, an executive session for personnel discussions. Um, and I think it's the same statute citation. As it's just a different, it's a different subsection. Yeah, like right. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else for the agenda? Could I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. Jamie says mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's everyone. So uh, motion carries. Um, Cookie was good. Kaylee <clears throat> says she'll be here ASAP. Uh, communication from the audience. Anybody here to communicate anything that's not on our agenda? All right. Um, next up, select board approved minutes from last time, which was May the second. Motion uh, to approve. Second. Any discussion, changes, comments? All in favor of approving minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed. Motion carries. Um, all right, next is, uh, oh, where are we, town manager report. All right, um, so the assessor's office um, sent out a mailer. Recently, I got it today in the mail at my house uh, that the 2025 grand list reappraisal is beginning mm. and there will be um, employees from New England, New England Municipal Consultants, NEMC, uh, to be doing the townwide reappraisal. So uh, on the mailer, it says if you wish to make an appointment, you can call um, number provided on the mailer. Um, but otherwise, they're just, you know, they're getting, you know, trying to get all of them done. So they're just going to be stopping by and hoping to catch people at home um, to, to do a quick assessment of the house. Will it take about a year? Um, for some reason I have in my head that I don't think so. it's next year that we're gonna start. This is for the 2025 grand list. How many hmm. people do that? Is it just like two? two. Yeah. And do they just do it on Monday through Friday? Yeah, during then, work hours when people are not usually yeah. home. Unless you make an appointment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's suggested that if you do work all day, you should mm -hmm. make an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be handling those. Um, Amanda's actually going to be hand handling those appointments. Do you have to be there for that? I, I would suggest. Because they need to go inside. Yeah. Well, they don't go inside if you're not there. No. Oh, right. they, do no. you have to allow them inside? Um, no. Okay. You don't. Yeah. No, I guess you don't. Yep. All right. It makes it really hard for them to do their job and to get an accurate value of your house. So you can just guess. Right. But if you don't have as many bedrooms as you used to have or you don't have right. something that you used to have, you might want to let them inside so they right. can see that. Yeah. They're just regular Joes. They don't report anything to the feds. That's what people are worried about. Um, 
We had a pre-construction meeting at the townhouse last week. That project is going to begin, if it hasn't already. Haven't yet, but um, I think it's the rain. They'll be mobilizing and getting into that project. Um, my office, we're working on union negotiations. We're um, winding those up with the police department. We're hoping to sign a three-year contract. Um, is you, he's okay. he, he's been privy to the meetings and you're in that. Okay. Yeah. I'm in the know. Right. Good. Yes. I um, trust. It's him. good to have one person from the board in that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, well, but there's no big, no big huge issues or changes. No, but every year right. negotiation, no, no. negotiation. It's nice to have one. person I'm there to make board. sure that. Yeah, we were. There's a couple of things right now. We're kind of in the holding pattern on. Right? Um, the long-term recovery groups for FEMA have uh, been established and where we had a meeting with the neighbor, with Helen and neighbor to neighbor last week um, regarding kind of aligning with one of those groups, which is um, long-term recovery is like uh, case management outside of FEMA. They're more like nonprofit groups, Red Cross, um, uh, United Way, those groups that partner with local organizations to provide ongoing case management so FEMA can kind of start to phase out. So we're just kind of uh, hoping neighbor to neighbor is kind of taking that on, but we're just kind of keeping things um, on the front step so we know what's going on. So that meeting. Um, we have a new PDMG, which is a new um, grants manager for FEMA, so this is our third one. Um, the second one didn't last very long. Yeah, he did. He got the most done. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, and he was, like, he looked just like Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. It was, <laughs> it was fun. Um, and... We had, I had our town attorney draft up the agreement for the Harvick Farms Bridge permission to use when it's closed. Um, I have yet to <coughs> present that to the Lagos Farm, but I will. And I was at an outdoor recreation conference the last two days, Tuesday and Wednesday, very informative. The Northern Forest Center put it on. Um, outdoor recreation is like one of uh, I think it's the second highest gross national product or GDP, gross domestic product uh, in the country, like mm -hmm. $600 billion. So um, there's a lot to learn from the other states that were there. Maine does outdoor rec really good, New Hampshire's and New York, and uh, hopefully with the Borac program and, um, you know, Vermont is is forging ahead as well. So we want to try to create a local economy here for outdoor rec, I hope, and uh, with the LVRT coming through. So it was a really informative conference and hopefully good things come out of it in terms of funding from Northern Borders. Hmm. They were a big player in that okay. too. Yeah. Cool. That's all I got for now. Pedestrian bridge. Oh, I wrote that on there. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, uh, that went out to bid yesterday. I've gotten s four requests already today. First thing this morning. Can you send me the plans? Great. So we're going to have a lot of interest on that one. Yeah. Work is... Yeah. You, work, you're going to see another sweep. I think a lot of people are looking for work right now. Yeah. That could be good for us. Yeah. It's going to be good, right? It's going to be some good good opportunities to get contractors because hmm. a lot of people got into a lot of things a couple of years ago. And <laughs> that money's no longer around. Yeah. Between COVID money, flood money, the last few years there's been a lot of money that's been available for people to do work. Yeah. And now there's not anywhere near as much work. Like all the FEMA stuff is like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> slowed right up as we know. Yeah. Have we put out a request for proposal for uh, demo clerk of the works for the pedestrian bridge? No, I'm currently the project manager of that. <clears throat> I 
Yeah. Okay. Do you want to be project manager? No. So, isn't so? Mm-hmm. Allison Lowe has the request for proposal we put out for the yellow barn. Mm-hmm. There was probably one for. Was there one for townhouse too? Mm-hmm. I wonder if that is that something maybe Tracy could take or those. No, yeah, we could def- we could definitely do it. Um, we just ha- we hired Jamie. Yeah, we didn't off. have one for the townhouse. Um, mm-hmm. But we can definitely put one out. It's a good idea. Who there's do do? there's other there's another possibility that we might have with Vermont Community Foundation for that type of work. So, but wouldn't we still have to find somebody? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think, given that it's out to bid and it's going to be out to bid thirty days, and you know, yeah. we're just it's going to move on. I think we yeah. get somebody in place because I think we need you need somebody. Right. Yeah, I would agree. Assign that to somebody on your staff. Yeah. Did we get official word on a grant that we received? Not official. No. Oh. Okay. But you can get it. No. I'll wait until it's yeah. ready for prime time. The Transportation Alternatives Program <coughs> have announced on their website that Hardwick received uh, 90000 yeah. I don't know. For Mill Street and South Main. South Main rebuild design. What about the? Uh, um, but we haven't received official notice. Oh, uh, right, right, right. That's looking at um, the, the sidewalks and the, the one that was supposed to there. give us an answer back in March, and they finally have are finishing their process apparently. Wow. Bids for the flood property cleanups. We have a, a site meeting tomorrow, mandatory site meeting tomorrow. I mean, who dictates what's got to be done? The Fed, FEMA? Uh, this is state emergency management, but they, in the bid package, it, there's a questionnaire and a, a form that all bidders need to fill out. Um, and then we'll go over each property as to what their plan is. Are they all going to be one? One bid? Um, yeah. So it's going to be some sizable amount of wear. Yeah. It's going to include demo, cleanup, and some sort of remediation. On the septic tanks. They either have to be removed or. Right, but I mean, crushed. what about the. I mean, does it cover seed and mouths and yes. cover and stuff? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fair amount of work there. There's a fair amount of work there. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the motel is going to be a good the size. The motel is. The property, the motel property, tested positive for asbestos too. Um, nice. So they got to deal with that asbestos on the property, on the in the building. Yeah. So. So that's we close on the Polonis property tomorrow at ten. We have a site meeting tomorrow at noon for all four properties for cleanup. <coughs> and then I think the bids are due at the end of the month. And we have to remove a, a structure, a, a sewer structure. Um, they have to cap a well. What is the uh, carrier? Uh, what, what's up there? That, where was the septic? We already had the closing. Oh, where was the septic? I don't know. Somewhere. They'll find it. Uh huh. They'll find it. Oh, yeah. yeah. If there ever was one. Yeah. Who knows if it. Anyway. All right. Feel so, free to come to that if you're around at noon. I'd like to, at but. 209 School Street. All right, I'm gonna move us along because that was your. Yeah. You were done a while I mean, ago. I can keep going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Next, road foreman report, Tom. Uh, let's see, we got Todd's truck back, so that's up and going good now. Uh, we had to replace the oil pan on that. Uh, front springs got replaced. Uh, kingpins, so all that truck's back up and going good. Uh, we replaced the uh, culvert that was. Uh, Giving us problems on Center Road. Uh, oh, just, yeah. By, uh, across the flat there, once you reach towards the top. So we put a new two footer in there to take care of that problem. And at the same time, after that, we went to Dusty Swamp. We had a couple culverts up there. We replaced two up there. We got that done. Uh, we started painting some cross crosswalks in between the rain showers and stuff, but we're still trying to get caught back up on mowing and stuff. So. Next week looks good, so we should be able to button up down, downtown for cross crosswalks and everything, if weather permits still. 
what else? Uh, grading's been spotty here, here and there because of the rain. Uh, today we spent most of the day up to Tucker Brook because uh, that washed out again. Uh, we had two culverts up there got plugged and uh, I guess it was quite a downpour out there. Uh -huh. Just a short section yeah. up there but we, the upper part there kind of washed out on us again. So we tried to unplug the culverts, of course they're all full of ditch stone and stuff. So we ended up ripping those two culverts out and putting in brand new ones up, up, up there to get that water flowing back. Uh, so we got the road back op open this afternoon. Uh, West Hill Extension, same thing. We had a little washout on that section. Uh, there's one culvert there that goes into a field that we got to replace and redo. And there's another culvert on Bunker Hill that uh, goes across uh, God's dooryard. It's small. So we're gonna rip that out and replace that one. So yeah, a lot of color work and everything else. Uh, we spent half a day downstairs here trying to unplug their sewer for them. Uh, spent two days hauling sand back to the sewer plant for that project down down there. Uh, so that's where our loader's been and stuff. So, but I think pretty close to being there. So. So we had sand, Danny was telling me earlier, there's, there was sand from our pit that we were able to use. Uh -huh. Yeah, there was some great. winter sand that was left, screen sand up there, so. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a couple hundred yards of That's great. Um, septic sand, actually, that Kenny had, that was certified septic sand that would work good for backfilling and stuff. Yeah. Screen sand's what the hell it is. Yeah. Nice. A couple hundred more yards. <laughs> They put like so. fifteen hundred in there, right? Yeah, yeah. We hauled back what yeah. thirteen hundred yards yeah. there those two days. Yeah, that's uh, the lagoon ballast sand. So for the second lagoon, so that <coughs> that liner's been installed. Great. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah they finished the sand yesterday. <laughs> there's that whole project too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the money side of that project, so yep. I haven't really spent a lot of time down there, but things are going well. Great. And they're going to put the aeration in. And those two lagoons should be back up and running. Nice. Uh, Before it gets hot. Yeah. Great. That's the plan. Another thing we got, uh, Debbie Goddard, we got her road fixed back up for her. Uh, we're just trying to pack stuff up still from last year's flooding. Uh, you know, with it raining and stuff, that's what the boys been out doing is ditching and stuff. So we started ditching again on Porter Brook. Uh, we made it all the way up to uh, Dennis Demers's where he used to live on Porter, Porter, Porter Brook Road. Uh, just past Pon Pumpkin Lane, and I just started pitching on. That's that's where we ended up before we had to move everything out of there today and go that way. So we got a little bit more work to do Monday up in Tucker Brook, but we should be able to finish that up on Monday. So yeah, that's quite a lot. Great, Good thank you. Movers. Yeah, appreciate your work. I was surprised to see 600 hours on the new loader already. So. It's getting worked. The equipment gets used. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. only a year, right? Not even. Not even, not even a year. Wow. Yeah, in August, maybe September. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we did. We did. After the flood. We didn't have yeah. it for the flood at no. all. No. We uh, rented that one for two months. Right? Yeah. We did. Oh. All right. Um, mm, we're we're going to skip the police report. Yeah. Unless you want to tell us anything. Uh, okay, next up, Hardwick Electric Department report. We have Roger Prevo here. Welcome. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my report tonight for Hardwick Electric will be um, largely, as you'd expect, how we're covering the, the, uh, the transition now without a general manager. Um, <clears throat> one, we do have an interim general manager, Jim Fontaine, in the position. He's not able to work full time. Um, or commit for a long time, but he's been just invaluable, you know, bringing his experience. So um, that that's one thing we've done. The other thing that's not necessarily directly related to the general manager transition, but happens to be coincidental with it, and that is that we have uh, a number of unfilled lineman positions. And what that's done is that creates a real burden on the few remaining for coverage 24 hours to be on call all the time <clears throat> and that puts pressure on everyone but of course Brian Foran puts the most pressure on him because he's the most experienced and uh, so what we've done now is um, signed a three-month 
um, on-call coverage agreement with the help of VEPSA with our three neighboring municipal utilities. So Morrisville, Orleans, and Stowe. Their linemen are now cycling in and providing that on-call coverage in a planned and organized way. <clears throat> so that's one of the ways VEPSA has helped us is, is orchestrating that. Then uh, the <coughs> next thing uh, uh, I'll just mention since I brought up the linemen, we've stepped up the recruiting efforts, found additional places where we can post the positions, and really being as, as aggressive as we can in the recruiting to get them filled because it's just not fair to the team <clears throat> to have that many positions open. It's also important for us to be able to just keep moving projects forward. Uh, so the, the recruiting has stepped up and we're hopeful that that'll mean additional candidates coming in <clears throat> and making some hires. Uh, the next thing that's a concern, of course, in addition to maintaining operations, which I think we haven't had any, any problems with operations to date, none that, that I'm aware of. <clears throat> it's just the stress on the crew and the potential that we'll fall behind. Um, so what we've done, the key project to not fall behind on is the Walcott, Electro, uh, the Walcott Hydro rebuild. What Veps has done there is <clears throat> made available uh, Dave Gagney, who has experience with hydro, and he's now the project manager for Hardwick Electric to get Wilkett Hydro back up. <clears throat> he's transitioned in, reviewed all of the, the files and information, and uh, <clears throat> we believe we can keep that rolling uh, well. The, uh, <clears throat> the other challenge of the transition, frankly, is just office operations, and in particular, when invoices come in, and the largest number of unusual invoices, not routine invoices, but unusual ones that are coming in are related to the Wolcott Hydro project. <clears throat> and because that was managed exclusively by our prior general manager, um, each invoice now has to be carefully reviewed. And then, um, you, you know, what the way we're doing it is Lynn Gedankin or other commissioners, but frankly, Lynn has been bearing the burden of it as our chair. She's been coming down to the office um, as needed to review invoices as they come in, review them with the, the team to make sure, and reviewing the uh, paperwork and the files to make sure the invoice is valid. And then she's also coming down to sign the checks. So that's how we're covering right now. It wasn't fair, Jim Fontaine can't really do that because he doesn't have the continuity. He wasn't here, wasn't in the saddle. <clears throat> so that's probably the, the most challenging part. That'll be less challenging as we go now because Dave Gagney will be up to speed as project manager. The invoices that'll come in relate to things being done on his watch and we'll be able to get it. We still have the issue of Check signing. So who signed checks before, Mike? Uh, yeah, we had a so dual Mike signing. So we saw the invoices, and he's the one that signed the checks. But we also have our financial manager, Beth Esser. So we did have checks and balances. The problem is Beth is as the financial manager. She doesn't know the content of the work. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I share your concern, but yeah, I, that's why we're being yeah, super careful. Yeah, yeah, because I can see where you want to make sure that, that yeah, good. Yeah, because it's tough if an invoice comes in to the office, the office staff don't know. Right. No, no, I understand. So, so again, you know, I think all of the commissioners have been have raised their hand and said we'll help as we need to, but I, I think. Beth, as chair, has taken about. Lynn. I'm sorry. Lynn, Lynn, as chair, has taken <coughs> most of the phone calls from Beth, and she has been the one to come down and do the work and all that. So <clears throat> it's moving forward, thanks to Lynn being being available and being willing to do the work. <clears throat> the um, recruitment of the new GM. Um, we have a meeting on Monday, and that'll be a key topic that we'll be going through commissioners meetings, getting ourselves rolling on the recruitment. 
um, that recruitment will place a greater emphasis for the next GM on community relations, ratepayer relations. Um, it'd be a, a little bit reduced emphasis on technical experience, a little bit more on, on that. Direction. Direction. Yeah, and then the, the consensus view that's building is that you know we can find other ways to address the technical experience. Absolutely. That's more available. We got to get the the community relations side of it right. Yeah, and often, <coughs> often it's best to have to look for the best technical answer and not have one voice be the technical decision maker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. An opportunity. Te technology is a moving target to try to hire. You know what I'm saying? You mean if you have a manager who's actually looking to his the people who work for him for input and right. making decisions based on that input, not one person having technical knowledge and the decision making that. Right. Yeah. So um, those are the high points. Are there any questions or any issues that, that you've picked up at the select board level or Opie at the, the town level? You know, are, are, are we, even though it's in some duress, I think the lights are on, the operations are continuing. And uh, I don't want to minimize that Brian, everybody, the office staff, everybody's having to do extra work, but it's, I think we're, knock on wood, we're smooth sailing. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard any negative. Yeah. No, I have not heard any complaints. I, I heard um, some commendations some, uh, from the Yellow Barn construction from Wright and Morrissey. They, they said that things are going they were impressed how smoothly things were going <coughs> this last yeah. week. Right. Yeah. And two. the other thing we're doing, you know, the way our commissioners' meetings have traditionally worked is we'd have the general manager obviously in the meeting, and then we'd have Beth Essary, the financial manager, in the meeting. What we're doing now is Beth continues because she's got a lot on her plate, but also um, Brian Foran has been attending. And Jim Fontaine is the interim general manager of the tenant. So bring it, it to the extent <coughs> Brian's available and can do it, it's really good because I think we're hearing directly what the issues are out, out in the field and then trying to come up with solutions like this, this three month deal with the other utilities covering no call. But it's still, um, you know, it's, it's still just being short staffed. Puts a lot of pressure on Brian, for sure. So that that's the update. If there are no questions. Okay. Anybody else have questions for Roger? Good work. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming too. Um, all right. To, to next item one: Select Board to discuss conveying town-owned real estate that is located on Cary Road and Main Street. We had a proposal for conveying uh, <coughs> carry road, right? Yeah. Yes. What? Well, you had a proposal for conveying carry road, I thought. Yes. I had a proposal? Like my email? You yeah. Know? Well, that was what I thought the consensus what you guys wanted to do. I know. I want you to do this. Well. Oh, so say it. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I say we post uh, any property. I'm going to read the email. Did was it that good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's let him say No, I, so I thought about we, we need to pop, put a policy in place. We don't have one. We don't have to do that tonight. But basically, I think in the future, as soon as the board decides to have any sort of real estate sale, it's to be posted for 30 days. Um, and I thought it should be posted through a professional, but that may cause a problem with the fees. I, after, after I said that in my email, I don't know if we want to go that route. We may want to just post it in our paper of record. I don't know what, you know, again, we should have a policy that says we do this. I don't know what this is. I don't know what we should do exactly. For these here, I say we do something and start the 30-day clock 
Yeah. Because we have a proposal. Yeah. The, the 30 day clock is as, as, as required by statute when you have a buyer. When the, when the real estate is, is going to Right, but the day. question everybody was, was worked up about was yeah. nobody else. Not making yeah. sure everyone yeah. knew so that it could, was for sales. Yeah, so that'd be, it's, it'd be a different 30 day. Yeah, thing. that's fine. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's fine. I, okay. I understand. I'm not I just wanted to clarify yeah, yeah. just to make sure. No, I get that. There's, yeah. a, there's a, I, I understand once we take an offer. I understand there's an additional 30 days. I yeah. understand. But it often takes but 30 days. So what I'm saying is, anyway. is, we're talking about, the question is, do we make it public that mm -hmm. the property's for sale prior to accepting bids? Did that come out right? Yeah. 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 So we would ask the bid that was submitted to us to be resubmitted. Yeah. In, in 30 Post days. It, and then ask the... 30 days we open the bids. Yeah. Right. That seems like that's what the statute says. I think we, the statute is for conveying real estate. Right, but that's what I, I, I think it ties up everything, it makes everything, it works for everything. You know what I mean? I think it, it's fine for me, it's any statutory requirements. Posting a notice in at least three public places, blah, blah, blah. After but that's you've accepted. A, yeah, that's after you've accepted a, a bid oh. and you've entered into like a purchase and sale agreement sort of thing. Yeah. So what we're talking about is before entering into a purchase and sale agreement with somebody, posting mm -hmm. it public so that the notice. public is yes. Right. So public we notice. don't necessarily have to have that for thirty days. We, we don't do have to. Two well, weeks just, or something. We don't even have to do it at all. It's just that the, we felt like people right. should know. I didn't like, do it at all. I wanted to two Thursdays ago and be done with it. Right. So. That's what I wanted to do. Thought, I, thought that was obvious. So we also don't have I'm a public. Didn't yet. say anything. <laughs> So we also don't have a policy that we're following. So I propose, at least for Cary Road, do we, where we definitely know we have an interested buyer, we should uh, let the public know by posting it in our paper of record. And it could be for two weeks. I'm fine with two weeks. Two weeks. I make a motion that we post Cary Road property for sale in our paper of record for two weeks with the opening of the so the first time you could get it in would be a week from today, right? So Unless we change our paper of record. Today. So what about our meetings? Today's the 16th. We don't meet till the 6th. That'll, that'll work, right? Yeah. On the 6th? Or do we want to go to the 20th? So you accept bids till the 6th? Or the 20th. There are our choices. I don't care what. 6 is fine. 6. 6. Mm -hmm. And we, why couldn't we do that for both properties? We certainly could. We should do it for both properties and we it'll be done. Be the same. It'll be done. And if somebody gives us an offer after that, that's fine, right? Yeah. yeah. We've, we've, uh, we've made it public and so we don't have to do it again, is my meaning. We've done right. it once. It's for sale. Mm -hmm. Got it. Which is what we're trying to accomplish with this. Okay, hold on. I just want to just clarify something. So you put both properties publicly out for bid, you receive bids until a certain date, and you just said if we get another interested buyer after that, we can... So if no one, so I'm not saying that someone has to make a bid before I just want to the six, yeah. they, if down the road in, in a year, somebody makes us an offer, I mean, if we, do, if we don't sell, if, it if we sell. don't sell, no if bids on it. Nobody makes All right. It. But the public's already been warned. How much been and, warned? And in our, warned. in our bid, we can reserve the right. Reserve the right. Absolutely. We want Any to reserve the right. Okay. Yeah. Reject yeah. everything. Got it. Yep. So that. And then it just serves, it, it checks the box that it was put out, it was made public notice. People. We don't sell real estate that often. Fair right. warning. Yeah. And, and you know, be done. Do you want to post it anywhere else other than our paper of record? Our right. website. Our website, anywhere else? I don't care. That's good with me. Well, okay. That's fine. I'm just yeah. asking. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't Seems know like what these days. I don't know. If you go on VLCT website, they got stuff in there for sale all the time. Well, we can put it yeah. on the state bid site, too. I put it anywhere you want. I don't mind it. This is the one time to let the public know that it's for okay. sale. Because 
honestly highest bid. If somebody wants to give us three hundred grand for it, I'd say they should own. I was, I was, gonna, say, I was gonna say I want. <laughs> no, my no, my no, only yeah. stipulation is we get the highest bid. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my only hesitation of accepting the other one. It's I think it's worth more. So. There's a motion on the table. Can we have a second? Or do we need a second? Yeah, we do. So, Danny, do you finish your motion? Yeah, I finished it, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Guess so. Second. Okay. Okay. I, I finished it. Uh, All right. Yeah, you just got to make sure carrier rope is as is. So we yeah, can that's, clean it up. No, that's all part of it. That's under all right. the legal. Yeah. That's all the legal beagles to take care of yeah. all that. All right. So, all in favor of. Uh, Posting those properties for a couple of weeks, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, good. We're moving. Item two. Oh my goodness. She was in and then she just barely left. She's got that much coming right there. Yeah, she does. She's still waiting for an EK broadband to come by. Yeah, so am I. Um, <laughs> next up is item two, select board to discuss changing the newspaper of record. Two, what are we changing it to? Well, um, do we, we I have a yeah. newspaper of record that only, that we can only, we, it's a once a week uh, paper. So it kind of hung us up a little bit with the bridge and doing that. So can we uh, have multiple? in thinking, you, have one? Um, you can only have one mm -hmm. newspaper of record. And I just wanted us to talk about the potential of changing to the Caledonian record or an everyday paper so that we don't have to wait a week to post something. Yeah. Yeah. I would Unless it's a monetary yeah. thing. You would or would you? Where's that? No. Not the Caledonian, I guess it's worthless. So. Or the Times Argus. Times Argus, I would definitely support the Times Argus. I mean, it just uh, an everyday paper gives yeah. us more opportunity to post. A, a variety of, of things, other RFPs, other notices. But to, the Cal everything that the Caledonia does is under lock and key. You don't get yeah. one sentence without paying. At least the Times Argus, you can at least read some of their stuff without paying, so people aren't so turned off by it. Caledonia turns people off because it's. Well, and we've had. Look the at this story, and then you open it, you got to subscribe for 16 years. <laughs> the News and Citizen, I. I confess, I you know it's a free paper, but I can't say that I actually look at it that often. I do, but I, I mean, find I it extremely should. interesting when I do. There's a ton of stuff in there. Anyone that's an old newspaper person reads it. So uh, I, it's a, you it's, think that's a better? You think it's still so good, even though we can only. I don't know. Well, you only need one newspaper record. It doesn't mean you can't post it in other newspapers. It's just no. expensive. Right. It yeah. just adds up. It's expensive. Yeah, I don't know the answer to And did we do paper. that for because the News and Citizen is less expensive? We did it because it comes it's for free. free. To everybody. To, and it, it didn't, mail it to didn't everybody. used to go to everybody, but now it does, right? Including East Harvard. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and that's hard to argue that point. So maybe that's still the best one. For now, and we have. I mean, our paper of record was the Gazette, which, which was, was weekly. Was, I know. Which was once a week. Right, I know, and that. So I can't the, go Part back of it to the was Gazette. around the, you know. The can it go back to the Gazette now? If they go. I read the Gazette every week now. We're not in print. That's the problem. That's a, that's all. So it's less accessible, accessible to people. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't think do we're going to. Event. We're not going to find a better. <laughs> we're not going to find that if, when you look at. I don't think we're going to find it. I think the news says it's a better place for it. Okay. Well, yeah. the question just came up because last week we were yeah. in we were in that zone of trying to get the bridge posted and uh, I, questioning I whether we had to do it all at the same time. So that's why I brought the subject up. We don't have to make any changes. I just wanted to. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just state, I'm kind it. of think I don't know anybody now that reads the paper online or in print. I do. Which, which paper? paper? Which paper? I read it every Saturday don't, morning. You don't know anyone who reads the paper? Well, like I read the people which I know. Paper? People I know. Any paper. Oh, really? They read stories. Right, but you I, don't read the paper. I read the it's not they, they don't read it like we used to read the paper because it's on your screen and you don't read yeah, it. Like you're right, right. you're right. Paper, you open the paper. So for that reason alone, I, I still the read the Business Citizen. Yeah. And I get a lot more out of it. 
than I do any of my... Yeah. Tommy Gardner does a good job of his Tommy Gardner's a good boy. Yeah. We miss him here in Harvard. Yeah. He started here. Yeah. He did. Well, that's we we, we cut his teeth for him. That's the Isn't nuisance it? citizen. Is he at school? Is the They're all the same. Reporter. They're all the same. Okay. okay. Well, then, I think the topic is covered. All right. So we're... Just stay good discussion, good. Good. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, it's, thanks. It's, it's good to, good to review. For people to know that this is something that this we, is where it, it, the information is. We're yeah. trying. We're trying, yeah. folks. All right, it moves along. Thank you. Next is item three. Select board discuss LVRT trailhead developments and connector loop. Sherry, this is you again, I think. <sighs> yeah, I brought this one forward because we have <coughs> supplies and things that are sitting in storage waiting to be placed okay. for our trailheads. Oh, yeah. Um, the kiosks, the, you know, we got the grant from Solid Waste District for the trash receptacles and the recycling receptacles. Um, the LVRT local committee met and made, a, made some decisions about where we would want to place those things. Opie's um, was over there in the rain with them. I was under the roof. So where so, are we going with this? Um, it's expected of the town? Are we looking yeah, at who's, town? Yeah. Who's responsible? There's to nobody board. else that's right. going to do it. Right. Yeah, um, so the state did this thing where yeah. when they took over the rail trail. Yeah, oh yeah, I know this. You remember? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that they, remember they, I started with the rail trail. I know, but ago. when they took it over, they, they, it was great that they completed it. It is great, and they are maintaining it, which is awesome. But all the trailheads fall to the downs. And a lot of their signage is still coming soon. We don't know when. Um, so, for instance, like on the other side of Creamery Road, we don't have a street sign. Yet we have parking on Creamery Road for the trailhead and for the townhouse. It would be so. helpful to have that street sign up if we own it. Um, do we, you know... Can we place the kiosks that we have? Um, sure we're about to have. Um, Are you going to get out there the and do that? Outdoor no, 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 no. You're so, talking to a guy who's done more trail work in this town than. Well, that's but that's my so point. It's hundred other people, so no, I'm not. No, I'm not going to pay. Anything. Right. Well, and that's I, my point. I'm not in favor of the road <coughs> crew doing it either. And they have more work than they can do. So I think the Omaha Valley Rail Trail Committee and the Omaha Valley Rail Trail users. Should figure out a way to make the trip. That's pretty. That's next week. Okay. But aren't we responsible then for the no, major no, infrastructure? We are not responsible for nothing. No, but if we want people, we can to help. We have can help. People, if we we're not responsible, but don't we have a bunch of material? We have kiosks that will have signs. Um, you know, post information. The new outdoor Hardwick outdoor map. That information is going to go into one of those kiosks, and that's going to be ready before the kiosk is anywhere to be seen. Um, we have the trash and you know recycling receptacles that we applied for a grant and got it, and we have in place them. these things are in storage. So, you did you also just say though that the locations have been identified? Yeah. So are you on it? No. no. Wait a minute. No. No. This no. No. Not, no. 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 We no, don't no. have. We don't have the research. Fun set aside. For we don't have staff trailers. to do this. This is not, the rail trail is not the highway department. No, not going to happen. No. So that needs to be commu so communicated to. Okay. <laughs> so no, it's project. not. It's something, it's there's no way. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. so for, for example, for each target, yeah. um, we had a meeting with the chance mm -hmm. to ask for the lease for the, for the space. So they're aware of it. Um, I think the next step was we needed to get a square footage or some boundaries written up. And then down here, we proposed uh, a gravel path improvement on the uh, west end of the depot. Mm -hmm. uh, not anything like that scoping study. Mm -hmm. It was we moved the location. Mm -hmm. um, b agreed to it. Okay. Um, so that's where the kiosk would go and um, a, the picnic, a picnic table and trash. I don't know if that was where we agreed on the trash and recycling, but I'm, I could check. So <coughs> we have a general idea of where it's going to be. Great. Um, and the size of it. Yep. And we have the amenities in place. Who's going to who's going to take care of it? Who's going to pick the trash up in the trash receptacle? These guys. 
No. Oh. They pick them no. up. No, no, you guys, no. Okay. Well, now, it's part of the grant that was written. Part of the grant so we was. Can get our rec, we can get our we can get So our get town our highway crew there. now is unallocated resources are going to go into the rail trail instead of our highway. As part of the grant for the solid waste district for those receptacles, it was it was in that budget what we would have to pay. I believe Perry was the was the amount that the research amount um, what we would have to pay somebody to pick up a hauler to pick up. Good, that's. Um, but and you know, there's no money for anything anywhere. But in the Cary Road property, in our budget, we have a. <laughs> balance of $14,860 that we're not going to end up needing to spend on Cary Road because we're going to sell it. So I'm just saying, there is a little bit of money and we do need some money to do this stuff. And the question is, do we want to allocate those funds to yeah. setting up yeah. the trail? Yeah. Okay. Uh, or any part of it? Or do we, is there a portal it that's going to be anywhere? Can I just ask a couple clarifying questions about the maintenance of the amenities <coughs> on the rail trail. Yeah. So the management plan that the state put out kind of put this in the town's laps to do. And so the state it, has mandated that we it, do They have a mandate. They have a mandate. They just put a guidance document of so, a management plan. Let's call it a management plan. I understand what the management plan has been involved. So yeah. And like there's one for the the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail plan and that we could use that fourteen thousand dollars on, right there on the Road. Mm -hmm. So if we decide not, the I guess the only alternative is to not put any amenities in. So it's either we're it's we can't like uh, what I'm just saying so we can't be half in. So I understand either, that. I understand. But that. I've said from the beginning. Yeah. There's no money to take, do this, no money to take care of this stuff. But we have the materials. We signed. Uh, okay. We right. signed. So no, nobody's going to fill the garbage can, or nobody's going to knock it over, or nobody's going to, you know, whatever. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not advocating one way or the other, Danny. I'm just. I'm, I'm not. I'm real. I, I, I agree with you. I don't think that it's right. the town's responsibility, but then it needs to be communicated to. You know, I mean, I think the people who go there and use the rail trail want some amenities and oh, yes. and like what you said of whether that's communicated to the committee, you know, the Sheryls and get a volunteer effort or whatever. I don't know if that's possible, but I agree with you that it's not our responsibility. We did set a precedent by signing up with the consortium to get the scope, and we have made investments. Should we? We should review the vote on that one. We have made investments. It, I mean, that's we yeah, can. That's fine. No, but we have made. Matter, I got voted, so. We have made investments. All right. To amenities on the rail trail, in the form of the scoping study. So. So the answer to my question is that there is money that is going to be spent on the rail trail out of this budget that we didn't plan on. Because yeah, we, we didn't put any rail voted, trail. We haven't voted on. But it's just a suggestion. The suggestion was made that well, you, there are funds available in Cary Road. We're just putting the facts out there. No one's okay. And I understand. It's just information. Can, can we figure out how much it would cost to place this kiosk and put the stuff in there? Because we have the, the it's resources. It's on the grant. It's, we have a budget for it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. Oh, important. can you guys say anything? Yes. I just wanted to chime in that I think that I'm hearing your point, Danny, but I'm also thinking about the future. Like, it's great that we maybe have some money this year, but what about future years? I mean, I personally, as a user of the trail, would totally donate some money uh, to the town for something like that. And I think that's something that we could utilize, we could use, like, business sponsorship in the past. Like, I think we could be creative about it. I think. To Sherry's point, we have the things. It's not like we're asking if we get them or not. We have them. <laughs> we already decided that we were going to get them. So if we if we put them out and then we see, I, mean, I think there's also strategic ways that we can put them out as well. Like there's a big difference. If you were to put one out right next to Harvard Farms Road in East Harvard, it would get filled with all kinds of other junk besides trail users' junk. 
So if we think about that as well, and replacing them, like um, I know that the trailheads have already been designated, but um, I just think we like it would be a different discussion if we were asking if we get them or not. But we have them. We've already we've already committed to having them. So can we just say, Opie, let's Tom, let's put them out there. If it ends up being a lot of work, extra more money, we'll revisit it and we'll figure it out. I mean, it just seems to me like we're not really asking if we have them or not. Because we are. No. I don't. I don't know why we would not want to put up kiosks that would help direct people to our downtown businesses and tell them what's available in Hardwood downtown that's right there. It's not a matter of not wanting to put them up. It's a matter of the expense of the rail trail falling on taxpayers that basically are unaware or not, I don't know. So that all of these things, you're absolutely right, Kaylee, should and could be done. And there could be someone in the community, a nonprofit or the committee, to raise funds to do these things, just like other trail users do. But I don't think it's right to say, just because we got the grant, which I brought this all up when we got the grant, when we asked for the grant, I brought all this up, that somebody has to take care of this. And our road crew, especially this time of year, is thin. They do their jobs, they work their hours, and there's, their priority is the sewer, the water, and the roads. Sure. And now we're adding the rail trail. Are we? Sounds it. But in the grant, it is allocated that that provides bu the budget to set up the kiosk and set up all these things and pay someone to do that. Correct? Like Correct. Just, the trash removal. Like the, the disposal of the trash. Okay. Not the actual pulling it out of the and changing the bag. But right. the disposal of the trash. Right, right. The, the tipping fee. Right. Yeah. How often, what do you guys, what's your, your SOP for Main Street? Whatever it's full. So we do it every Thursday. Okay. And then it depends on if this weekend's really good and check on Monday. But if Perry's picks up the garbage, are they putting garbage liners back in? Right. No, they're not going to pick in. They're not going to empty the garbage. They're dumping the dumpster. Where do you dump your garbage now? When you pick it up on Main Street, where do you take it? It burns. Right, so that's you're still that's you're going to do that same thing to the rail trail. The Perry's can't pick that up over there. That's a special dump dumpster that. Or, uh, I don't know who. Here, I don't. It doesn't matter. I mean, what I'm saying is, no one is going to. You're to be clear. So we're going Sherry, to the rail trail with this box and the tool guy. You're saying the, no. What's in the What's in the grant budget is. Is that a budget the for the tipping track? fee? Yes, correct, correct. Not the maintenance of the can that's knocked over correct. by the raccoons correct. and overflowed with shit and everything else. Yeah, that's going to be the road crew. And how are they going or, to get up the rail trail? Or, I people would just be good neighbors and take care of the or or early right. morning user of the rail trail. That's a good Samaritan. These are, oh, these are not just regular cans thing. either. These are They're heavy. you know national parks. Back. Okay, I'm whatever. Let's just do what we're going to so do. So, can we could we agree that the kiosk won't require um, the road crew to? to no, they're not doing it. They're not installing the kiosk. I, the road crew. They won't not. require them for maintenance. They won't have to like nope. empty the kiosk. No. Nope. Right. Nope. Nobody's nope. emptying the kiosk. No. Nope. The kiosk is just the thing where you put your signs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Could we agree that it would be a good idea to put those up? The kiosk. Yeah. I I I thought that was included in the budget for in the grant. So if, if we already have funds allocated to put up the stuff, and we have the stuff, I don't know why we wouldn't do that. No, it's just know. the purchase of that. Not to install it. It's not just the that actual was, that thing was itself. Yeah. So, so we have to pay to install it. All right. So we're spinning a little bit here. So mm -hmm. why yeah, don't we just, why don't we put this the to the next meeting and see if we can come to the next meeting with an actual plan for how this is gonna. Yeah, and yeah, maybe the funded. LBRT committee members could join us, and maybe the rec committee could take some ownership over this thing. Sure. I think you're good. You're getting some steam there. The rec committee has a budget. Yeah, that's right. 
They paid staff too, actually. Just to be perfectly clear, I'm not against the rail trail. Just for the right. I would. Yeah. You're just against. Yeah. I'm against amenities. the town. No, I'm against the taxpayers <laughs> doing it. I don't know is that especially without knowledge of it. We have we don't have a rail trail budget, folks. We're going to no, spend ten thousand right. dollars this year on the rail trail. We don't have a parks budget at all. Period. You know we've got a, like we've do. got a, a hybrid trails budget. We've got rec a rec, rec committee rec budget. budget. We've got opportunity to have a, you know, there's it's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just, I thought it was important that we you know pay attention to this stuff yeah. because otherwise it just sits in the I agree in the shed all summer long and okay so so by. let's look for a way to at least get the kiosks up because those don't require anybody to empty them I agree um, what, what's up with the connector loop that's on this as well um, well we're oh, in this. that we're getting close to the time of year when things get when street whatever happens painting on the street etc yeah, yeah. markings mm -hmm. um i'm not sure who does those center lines but mm -hmm. that's a big the part state of comes this through thing. and just does them without warning yep. so how do we direct that we i don't know potentially sure not have a center line in a couple of places according to this um the study that happened and the suggestions that were made that we've looked at briefly and we haven't made any decisions about how to move forward with it but the connector loop is part of the deal mm -hmm. with using USDA money for mm -hmm. the bridge. Mm -hmm. so it's also not it needed until the happen. bridge is there. But, right, yeah. but it does need to happen. Mm -hmm. We can't just not do it because that was part of the deal. So I just thought well, we it was could, time yep. to start yep. talking about Definitely. what we going to do. I do believe we should do it. I don't know that, I mean, it seems premature to, to do it this year because um, there won't be a bridge there until there's snow probably. Maybe not or close right but if they're going to come through and put a line in the middle of church street that's not that's part of this but it's not part but of that I, I don't know how you can can you even talk to them about that do you guys know oh i think you have to run that by the state because anything down through main street that's no it's state not main street. it's north main right oh, here north main. go out there yeah we decided they voted the select board voted to not put a center line on that road Mm-hmm. We did. Yeah. And to put the charrettes down. Okay, we gotta see this one. Yeah. I gotta see that vote. I was, I'm against it, but I'm I must have been into the Crown yeah. Royal or something. I don't know. None of our dirt roads have center lines and people still <coughs> manage somehow. It, it, it is right. one way right now anyways. It yeah. It's one lane. <laughs> and a huge speed bump. Yeah. yeah. It'll be that way for another three or four years. So I'll we'll we'll make an effort to not get a center line painted. There we're grinding. So I, I'm not being. Oh, that's true. I'm not yeah. trying to. Mm -hmm. I just got to ask the question. Why did we vote to not have a center line? I, it did was you a, look at this local, study? It was a local yeah, motion. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah I was. It was a local that. motion. Um, it's a traffic calming measure local. that people. Yeah. That is right. well known. So I, now I remember I was against the whole shoot match. So. Okay, but you'll you'll find out. Yeah. And that's just on it's just though. from here down, right? Well, the center line goes all the way up to. Oh, the center line goes all of North yeah. Main Street. The whole I thought yeah. the grinder was showing up in two weeks there, yeah. a few weeks ago. No. 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 We're not gonna touch that until they're done with their <coughs> heavy equipment at the library. Well, they're pretty done. They still drive that lift back. Yeah, I won't hurt it. That's not that heavy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Again, move us on. Thank you. Next is uh, item four: Select Board discuss potential economic development loan uh, for Front Seat Coffee. And Tobin came, and he's been. We've been entertaining him. I hope. Clearly, he doesn't know about bringing snacks. <laughs> <laughs> You can't have the bakery. Talk about bakery and not bring us. Didn't you already have a few cookies? <laughs> they were not as good as his stuff. No, though. that's true. Man. That's true. I can run down there. No. So can um, it help you, your proposal? No, that's bribing. And I'm, that's I'm kidding. Our policy. So. Could you give us the just since you're here and because we're sort of semi televised? Um, could you just give us the overview of your plans? So and why you're seeking uh, 
economic development. Totally. Um, quick summary. We started in 2019. We were, um, uh, our sort of initial funding was an economic development loan through um, the market, and that uh, was the bulk of our, our sort of initial funding. And, um, and <coughs> we have been, we've like made it through the, the pandemic, and we are growing, and, and that has all been great. Um, we're actually at a point right now where uh, there's enough of the time where we do not have enough capacity in our shop um, for people to have um, seats, and our our sort of kitchen area is also like it, you know just really um, tight, and so we want to be able to handle uh, handle more sales without necessarily increasing our labor. So. Um, in this industry, it's a it's really tight margins, and we're just trying to figure out all of the ways that we can keep on growing in a smart way. So this is where um, this um, that sort of brings us up to. In the last couple months, we found out that Birdsong Beer and Wine was uh, closing, and and that gave us an opportunity to expand our footprint uh, into that space. And and so our plan is to almost double our seating, um, double our, double or triple our retail sales, and then also uh, expand our uh, kitchen production. Uh, this is gonna enable us to do uh, some more, more food offerings, more like grab-and-go lunch stuff, some custom cakes, and set us up for being a hub for being able to do more wholesale and <coughs> potentially other satellite locations. So, for us to be able to do this expansion, uh, we are going to be needing to purchase a bunch of equipment and furniture, fixtures, and um, more refrigeration. And so that's where we are coming to the select board here to see if we can um, apply for another economic development loan. Uh, the original loan has been, um, uh, I think, third of it has been paid off. Um, and so uh, that loan had, I'm sort of learning that loan had an ABA, which is an all business assets as collateral. Um, since that we've take, you know, taken that loan, we've actually increased our assets quite a bit. Uh, you know, there's also depreciation too, but we've been purchasing equipment and expanding our operations and so, for us to be able to get um, a loan outside of the economic development loan, we are also coming up to coming up to an issue of collateral, and I think it would be a lot easier um, to add on to the existing uh, economic development loan that we have. So potentially refinance. So you have one loan, <coughs> uh, right? Not yes. A second one. Either either refinance that one loan or or have it be under the same collateral. Mm -hmm. um, more questions for Tobin while he's here. No, the proposal is very very conforming. There's a lot of good information in there. So, um, and it certainly appears to me that you're doing a fantastic job. I. Quite often, see people standing outside waiting to get in. So there's certainly, uh, so yeah, they do have good snacks. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just didn't get any tonight. No, that's no. He just no. I roll. That's all. Um, <laughs> I was kidding. If anyone was not clear, I, was, about that. I can be bribed. There's no doubt about that. So um, we also have. Uh, an executive session on, to discuss this loan for where we can get into the um, nitty gritty tonight. I don't know, do people want to ask Tobin to join us for that? Do we have questions for him about if stuff? He wants to stick around, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. give, I'd hate to have him not have the opportunity yep. to hear what we're talking about. We're can talking you, about. Can you hang? I can okay. No, Great. Um, I do have one other question. Are you thinking the same hours? You're going to continue with the same hours, or are you thinking of it being able to 
Yeah, we it just are, depends on how you can staff it, well, probably. The, the, um, if you look at our costs, the, uh, the thing that has the biggest impact on our sort of debt profit is labor. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to optimize what we can do to increase our sales while maintaining our existing labor. And there's going to be some um, areas where we are um, going to be increasing labor for more production, of course. And you know, um, in terms of hours, it's uh, sort of a TBD. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely open to expand, <coughs> extending our hours. Um, I also really like the idea of starting to do um, more events in that space, in that, mm -hmm. um, in the old bird song space. I was, I had this idea of like, maybe like a Friday evening or like the first Friday doing, uh, tagging along with some of the, the first Friday plans uh, to have um, music or, or evening events there. So okay. yeah. that's, that's part I just wondered, because right. I know that people, all, that's the first thing they say, is, uh, will they going to be open longer? That's always but you need question. to you need to be able to make yeah, the money like on it. Sunday mornings with more space. You you can have less staff or current staff do more work or serve more people, make more money. Where mm -hmm. if you're open Tuesday afternoons at till five, and if you have a staff member and you don't have any customers, you know yeah. it really changes your profit really quickly. It's a balancing act. And we were open until four last year, and it was it was right. You, you know, there's definitely people there, but they're not really buying things at right. from three to four. They're hanging out and not buying things. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I would really love. It. It's totally it's, it's fine. It's not a just, no. Yeah. It's just sort of like a yeah. It's totally fine. Other. I just know that's the first question other people that people will ask. So, yeah. for now, it's the same. Be a nice yeah. guy. Be a businessman. <laughs> All right, great. So hold, hang with us while we navigate through some more stuff. Okay, so next is item five, um, the farmer's market banner. Uh, Motion to street. approve farmer's market banner if it's okay administratively. Dave? Same as last year. And we have a the time slot is, or the dates okay. are available. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any questions on the banner? Uh, what, when is it going up? 24th is the first one. May 20th. Oh, soon. Yeah, 20th all right. Is the 20th, yeah, the 24th is the first farmer's wow. market. Wow. Uh, all right. Yeah, I got to do the parking lot this weekend. Yeah. I got to get the parking lot ready. All right. All in favor of approving the banner? Is there a banner up right now? There's, no. There's, there's no. two spots for banners. So oh, okay. Take okay. That that's spot. just the other spot. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of approving the banner, please say aye. 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 And you authorize Sherry to sign it. I authorize Sherry. Okay. And your motion, you authorize Sherry yeah. to sign it. All right. All in favor of all that. Did you say aye? Aye, I did. You did. Everybody's aye. Kaylee's. Kaylee's uh, you got to call Stowe Electric to get an electric truck up here to hang it. But. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Is We're voting on the banner uh, for the farmer's market. Okay, bye. All right, great. That's everyone. Thank you. Next, select board uh, reports, new business, old business. Um, I'll report that, that Yellow Barn, even though not all the clapboards were replaced, and it is true that you can tell which ones are old and which ones are new. The barn itself is getting close to completion, and Growls has been there doing a lot of work on the site. And um, the plan, the Cabot's target date to open in there is July 15. Yeah. It's got to come together. It may push a little, but holy cow. No, it it's definitely actually coming together. seems like it's going to happen. A lot going on around well, that's Thursday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, all right, that's my update. Um, all right, next we have three executive sessions to go through. I don't know that we need the second one, do we? I don't know. We'll find out. I don't think so. I don't think we I think we decided that. <coughs>
Mr. Upson. Yes. You ready? Do we, just before we launch into our executive sessions, do we need the one for real estate? Negotiation. How we put it in? It's no. in there, but do we need it? We don't need it, though. So we're not going to do that one. But we're going to. So we have two executive sessions. We're going to do one um, for uh, loan contract discussions to include the town manager and Tobin Porter. Um, and then after that, we'll do one to discuss first. personnel. Um, so, could I have a motion to go to the first one? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.